Hey guys, I'm Brad Allison, and I just realized I was uh, beating up fucking Eggman when I didn't realize I wasn't recording. So, um, oops, I played that with Bowser where he made mistakes. Ah, uh, luckily I didn't get too far, I was like the third guy I fought. But anyways, um, I was just saying, I wasn't, I'm not drunk or anything, I'm just really fucking tired right now. It's like 4 a.m., so please forgive me if I, if I'm more, um, uh, coarse in terms of language or anything than usual. Again, okay, I'm just really freaking tired, I just want to go to bed. But, no, I, I was just saying also that it's the first time in like, I believe a year or something that I have actually stayed up an entire night and that I haven't passed out or anything. Last time I tried that was um, a couple days ago, I passed out at like 3.30. I was on a Skype call, I believe, with a friend. Um, yeah, for Brawlhalla. I was, I was playing a game with a friend, Nash. You guys, you guys should go subscribe to him. I mean, he, he has some pretty good content on his channel. Plus, he's really into Brawl and Brawlhalla, just fighting in the general. So, if you're into that stuff, I highly suggest it. Anyways, um, yeah. So I tried to do, I tried to stay up as long as possible. I slept at like 3:30 because I like gave up. Um, and yeah, this is the first time like in a while that's like 4 a.m. I feel tired, but I don't feel tired. Mostly, c oh. Well, fucking nails and what? Nope. Fucking got caught. How do I have one ring? How do I have one ring when I start the level? That's that's like a that's a handicap. I'm not I'm no weak bitch. I can fight for my own. I'm like Iggy Azalea. I can fight for my own rights and independence and and, head, and chili hedgehog dogs things. Chili dogs. Chili dogs. I'm looking for more chili dogs. Jesus. Christ ass to get together. Oh boy, if I, went, if I had like another Donald Wasabi, I think that would have probably kept me up also, but maybe also made me want to go to sleep. Either or. I still have that 2 liter of uh, Mountain Dew, for those that are curious. It is uh, not finished. It's uh, still there. I drink like maybe a good swig or so every time I finish an episode. Just to convince myself that I'm not a petty little girl and that I don't need a uh, Natural things to stay off. That doesn't make sense, does it? Tonight on Late Night with Bassem, he doesn't form any proper sentences, and grammar is not his best friend. And then after that, he talks about his life or something. I don't know. Just figure out as you go. Improvise. Improv improvisation is the best of uh, comedy. It's actually kind of true, though. If you think about it, like. Because when you when you watch like a TV show or something, like you know it's scripted, but yet it's still funny, but it's scripted. But like you watch improv and it's like, dude, these are things that are just like literally happening out of nowhere. That's what makes Whose Line Is It Anyways so funny because you don't expect anything. Like you could you could expect anything and nothing as long as it's like appropriate for the FCC and blah blah blah, whatever, FCC, etc. etc. But still, like, it was funny to watch because you didn't know what you were going to expect in every episode. Oh god. And uh, Community, which is a show I might have bring up a couple episodes ago, is also a good show to watch because it brings that type of like uh, comedy where like uh, it's uh, like improvisation comedy I guess you want to call it. With tomato tomato. Excuse me sir, excuse me very much, I burped. My burp tastes like um, hummus for some reason, I don't know why. Oh Jesus Christ, I am Christmas. I, I am Christmas by the way, I am Brown Santa Claus. People don't tend to actually know me, the difference between me and Santa Claus. Mainly because, you know, Santa Claus, I mean, I'm a jo jolly white dude, gives away gifts. Brown dude giving away gifts, it's called terrorism or some shit, I don't know. Actually, that sounds really bad, I think I might get flagged for that shit. Uh oh. That's a note to self, but block, take away whatever you just said. This is bad stuff for you, don't say that. Cause it's not true, but people on the internet is all like, hey, he said stuff, this might be true, and you might get, you might have to go get security airport check, cause Murica. Actually that's about it, just cause Murica. <laughs> Alright, so I just, uh, yeah, team blast it, I don't care. He keeps on saying, by the way, like, what What are you trying to tell me, bro? 
By the way, what? I know, I know, I know that Sally's pregnant. You don't have to tell me that. The whole world knows that she's pregnant. That's the sad part. Oh, hey, okay, hey, bro. I'm not trying to get up in your stuff or anything, you know? Because uh, we can be some best friends, you know? You know I get to know you, you get to know me. Be a big family, but uh... I don't like it when you shoot me with guns and then ask me to be your friend. It's uh, kind of like a guy in the middle of the night, he's kind of just like, be my friend, I'll stab you. So, uh, oh, well, he's dead, it doesn't really matter. Really, the easy ones. Alright, so we beat this boss and we are going to be doing the What a waste. Uh which boss is this now? The railroad boss? The track boss run fuck, I don't know. We'll see. Story mode. Sanic. The Sanic team. Cause we Sanic. And Paul's in no cool no cool is. Uh-oh. Pinocchio. I don't know, I tried to beat box. I, I, when I'm in free time, I mean... I, I've actually downloaded uh, FL Studio because I was interested in making my own uh, music. I mean, this is all just for fun because like I have nothing better to do all day. And uh, I had a friend who came over earlier today, and uh, he taught me a little bit about FL Studio, like how to make a proper beat and all that. And uh, he left me with a pretty decent sample of a beat. I have an idea for something I want to do, but um, like I don't like I have these ideas in my head because I don't know how to properly apply them because I mean it's like the first. 10 minutes I properly, I actually properly use FL Studio. Like I have all these like little like synths and snares and all this other stuff that I want to apply. But obviously if you don't know how to apply something, then how are you actually going to do it? Oh boy. Uh, so this is a useless, yeah, I don't need things here. But yeah, I think my friend Student on, on Facebook is messaging me. You guys should go watch Student stuff too. Shameless plug in for Student because I love Student. Student's the man. Oh boy, alright. Oh, oh, oh god. Oh boy. I remember this stage. Yep. Oh, I remember this stage too well. Oh, uh, now the game becomes more dicky. Like, before you thought Sonic Heroes was just like a bag of balls, but no, it gets more, it gets worse. It gets worse, trust me on that one. I believe he's messaging now. Oh, boy, no. I think he's messaging me. I hope he's messaging me. I mean, free plug, free plug in, sure. But like, uh, if he's not messaging me, then I don't know who's messaging me. And when you get messages on Facebook, you you always want to make sure you're talking to the right person, because you know you have those people on Facebook sometimes. Oh God! What the? F oh God! What? Huh? Where am I going? Oh shit, I went the wrong way, I died. I'm tired. <laughs> that bull came out of nowhere, what? Why? What, Mr. Bull, what did I ever do? It's probably because I have knuckles on my team, god damn knuckles. Because he's red and bulls don't like looking at red because something about their eyesight. And it's like the only color they can, they can identify, I believe, or some shit like that, I don't know. I has to do something with like their eyesight and the way they identify colors or something of sorts. I believe. That's why bulls don't like the color red. Learning on late night with Basim. I, I, I don't know if I should call it late night or early- oh, I'm dead. Let's call it death- death's arrival with Basim, I don't know. I have three lives left. Fuck. Let's try without losing all those lives, right Sonic? Cause you're the leader of these guys, you know? You gotta, you gotta keep a firm knuckle, firm iron knuckle on these guys. Make sure uh, they don't step out of line. Or in this case, step off the fucking railing. Perfect. Alright, I'm not gonna touch anything, I'm just gonna let him, I'm just gonna let him do his own thing. 
Oh, you actually have to touch something because he he falls. If you don't do it, if you don't touch anything, he just falls. Uh, it's like this game wants you to like it, it wants you to like do stuff while it's doing things. But if you do things while it's doing things, it's just gonna fucking break the game. Make up your own damn mind. Uh, I I don't think I'm gonna beat this stage. It's already ten minutes in. I don't know. If this is a, this is the first stage. Oh god. Yeah, not the tails do it. Yeah, the rails. You notice the rails are gone too, Tails? Nah, yeah, two Tails. I feel like that's a nickname he should have. You thought you were gonna get me, but you didn't. You done, son? You done. Young goof. Young goof trooped. Oh boy, you're on the red railing, bro. That's a nice red rail. Road rail the Jackson. I don't know. Oh, there's a checkpoint here I missed out on. That's not good. Never miss on your checkpoints. Always have a firm. Make sure you're always on your checkpoints. You know, gotta keep up your check game. Cause you know, checkers. Checkers is a fun game to play. I used to play checkers. I used to play chess with my dad all the time, actually. Like when he didn't have a store. Well, well, this was back when he had a store, actually. Yeah. Like he he got like a big checker uh set deck a uh, board for I'm looking for the word board. Um, yeah, so we got like a checkerboard and um. Uh, it's a huge set and whatnot. I used to play checks, uh, chess with him all the time. He never got into checkers, I don't know why, but like he taught me how to play chess. And um, that's like the one fatherly son thing I guess we've ever done. That and also, I remember um, when I was younger, um, my family, I mean, right now they really don't like the idea of me playing video games and whatnot. I'm sorry, like, my like, school status, like I'm not doing too good and whatnot, and I kind of agree, but like, um, this is kind of like not correlating to this whatsoever. But anyways, um, uh, when I used to, when I was younger, I told you guys that my first console was N64, and um, the way I got my N64 was my dad owned a shop, and he used to like get these. Um, I forgot what he used to buy, but he bought he usually like bought something off like this one uh, uh store, like um, I, I guess you could say like his uh, friend a friend store in a way. Like this store, basically, it's kind of like a wholesale store, I guess, if you want to call it that. Where like we buy a lot of items for like a cheap price. And anyways, um, uh, it was like a small Asian store, like on the side of uh, Chinatown in Montreal. Anyways, um, so my first time I went there with my dad, I saw an N64 for the first time, and I was like, Dad, N64, and he got it for me, and uh, I got Mario Kart with it also. So, um. Later that night, I was playing Mario Kart, and I remember my dad, uh, yeah, because we got two controls with the thing, so he played as a uh, Bowser, and I was Mario, and I don't know how, but I made the correlation that, like, Mario's a good guy and Bowser's a bad guy because he looks so evil. And as you play the levels, you kind of see, like, there's Bowser's castle and all this stuff, and I was kind of like, Bowser's a bad guy. And my dad always played as Bowser and tried to beat me. I would always beat him, and I would just be like, "Yeah, Mario wins." And it's just like little childhood memories. I feel like I feel like teary I feel like I'm tearing up a little bit right now just thinking about it. But like, it's like the little things in childhood I've done that um I don't know. They just make me really happy sometimes. I, I'm tearing up right now. I'm actually not. I'm not joking. I'm tearing up because like, damn, that was the one thing I really enjoyed my childhood. Just like get like me and my dad just playing games together in general, like having a good time. And like now, like we'd never have that opportunity, I think, because like he he doesn't like he doesn't really want me to play video games and all, and he wants me to do better in school, and I'm trying, but like stuff happens, you know. Anyways, nice little childhood memory from Bassin, where he tears up. I don't know. Um. Oh yeah, another uh, good childhood memory with my dad. Um. If you guys remember Pokemon Snap, oh dear lord, I don't see the camera angle. I apologize. So, um, if you guys remember Pokemon Snap, um, it's a game on the N64 where you used to take pictures of Pokemon. And, um, I don't know why, but, like, I was really into Pokemon back in my day. But, like, I never played a Pokemon game until Sapphire, like I mentioned. So when I saw Pokemon Snap, I'm like, Pokemon Snap, I want it! So, again, my dad actually got me the game. But he never understood the whole point of it, of Pokemon Snap, and neither did I really. I never actually beat it until I was like an older age, when I figured out that you actually have to do some, you actually have to get points in order to advance the game. I was always stuck at the, uh, 
the third level, I believe that was a cave or I think that was a cave level, I'm not entirely sure. But anyways, um we had like a small joke how like Pokemon Snap was very bad, because obviously I didn't know how to play the game and it just didn't make sense to him in general. So when I was like nine years old, um there are the EV games that opened up nearby uh, our store, well his store at least. So I visited it and I asked him like how much did my Pokemon Snap for? And the guy said seventy five cents. So I told my I go back to my dad's store and he's like, hey, how much are they, are they buying it for? I'm like seventy five cents. So he starts laughing. He's like, just keep the game because it's not worth seventy five cents. So I still have the game, and we have like small joke also from my childhood where, um. If you play enough Pokemon Snap, like you're gonna notice how like Professor Oak always talks to you after like a mission or something. He's gonna be like, uh, "Well done, kid," or whatever. And um, my dad would just always be like, the "Professor says," and we always like a small mini joke where like every time I brought a Pokemon, he'd just be like, "And the Professor says," and eventually start applying to like school and whatnot. And it was just like another childhood thing that I enjoyed. Just like I, I guess like I, I got along with my parents or like my dad at least very well. Just playing N64 all the time. Um, my third game I owned on the N64 was Mickey Mouse Speedway USA. Um, if you guys don't know what that is, that's a rip off of Mario Kart for Mickey Mouse. And uh, uh, basically, like you're running around, and uh, what's it called um, you're basically just like racing around the USA, and uh, like you're just trying to like find your dog Pluto back because. Some people, like some bandits, like stole him from you. I, I'm not entirely sure about the whole storyline, but if that's as much as I remember. Um, I also, I don't, I never actually beat that game in general, like when I was younger, only because um, I actually got like platinum and whatnot. But there was a stage, I think it was uh, Colorado. It was an icy stage, except like it had a lot of drifting, and drifting in that game was not easy whatsoever. So. Um, I played with my dad, I'm like, Dad, can we beat the game? And he tried being the game. He he couldn't do it either, because like the trick was you have to actually slow down and you couldn't drift because drifting that game was almost impossible for like a regular person, but for an AI it was so smooth. So he tried playing the game, he couldn't do it. And um what was it? We played on the New York stage in battle mode, which was like on a cruise ship. And he made a promise to me. I, I, I'm pretty sure I remember this one properly. He made a promise to me that um, when I was older, he would bring me to New York, and um, he basically like he, he would basically like just both of us just like visit New York and like see all the stuff that we haven't seen. Cause no, no offense, to my dad or anything. Like I love man, but he is like very very social awkward and. I kind of got like my social awkward traits from him as well. Like I, I noticed it like very quickly that like the way that he's awkward and that I'm awkward is like very very similar. Okay. And it's not like I don't hate him or anything for that because like you can't control what you're born with, you know? Oh god, wait, how do I do the stage? Yeah, this one. And I believe it's this one? Uh, I think I got it. Not entirely sure. Yeah, so I don't blame him for like uh, like myself being like social shock or anything because like you, like you don't really know like what you're dealing with until you actually have it and then once you have it it's like oh well I mean you, you could all you could just do is like work to improve to not have it or like reduce it to like a more like what's it called like when, when you're able to deal with it more and like more like naturally rather than just like I have I have OCD and I, I can't do anything about it, but like, you can actually control your OCD with that word, fuck. Oh, anyways, I'm going off track now. Um, I might have mentioned this story actually, uh, my fourth game that I ever owned for the uh, N64 was Donkey Kong 64. And I promised myself I wouldn't tell anyone the story until I actually start playing the game on my channel, but this is kind of appropriate because I'm talking about my dad right now, and honestly, like, um, okay, this is actually more of a mom story, but also my dad's story. Um, I don't remember if this was when Donkey Kong 64 came out or anything, but I remember when I was younger, like five years old maybe, I saw an ad for Donkey No, I saw an ad for Super Mario 64 in Walmart, like on the Walmart flyers. And I asked my mom, like, Mom, can I have this game? She said, Sure, whatever. So we go to Walmart, and she had to get groceries, whatever, so that was whatever, fine. 
And when we reached the game section, I saw Donkey Kong 64 on like a yellow cartridge. And I'm like, Mommy, I want that. And she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I want it. So we go up to the sales lady. I remember the sales lady said something about like the game might be hard or like uh, not suitable for me or something. I don't really know. I think it was something about be it, the game being hard. I don't recall. But anyways, um, we, I, we got the game. And later that night, um, I played it. And when I started my... When I started the game up, when you start up the game for the first time, it shows like a small cutscene with basically um, uh, Donkey Kong and whatever. And during the cutscene, you see King K. Rool for the first time ever. And it was like this huge alligator with pink eye. And it was just really, like, for a five year old back then, I was just really scared because I thought he was going to like come pop out of the screen and like eat me alive. So um, I got scared, I screamed, and I ran to the bathroom, and I locked myself in the bathroom. So my dad is just like, what's wrong? He unlocks the bathroom and he's like, what happened? And I'm like, there's a thing in the game. So he's like, okay. He comes, sits with me and uh, we put, we started opening the game again and I see King K. Rool again. So I start freaking out. So he never, he didn't really understand what I was scared of, but I knew it was King K. Rool. So I was just like, again, I saw King K. Rool for the second time. I like, I just like went to the bathroom like my I was just like in tears because like I was scared shitless like there was just like snot coming down my nose and all that stuff it was like pretty nasty so what he did was he packed away my N64 for a couple of years and he marked down the day that he packed it up and he also marked down the day that I would play Donkey Kong 64 again um, and throughout the years like as I grew up like when I was six seven eight etc cetera, etc cetera, he would always ask me, like, uh, do you want to try playing Donkey Kong again? And I was like, nope, I I'm, I'm good. I don't want to play Donkey Kong. Because, like, I was still scared of Donkey Kong. And I couldn't play the game until, like, I was 13 or something. And, like, because I, I was, like, I was that scared of Donkey Kong. I thought he was going to come down and kill me. And considering, like, there was all these, like, 3D capabilities and everything, I'm just like, he's going to come out and kill me now. So, yeah. Um, when I started playing the game again at 12 years old, um, I started playing it except I was, like, this was in my new house, where I was scared of going to the basement because it was all dark and stuff. So like, um, when I play, when I start playing Donkey Kong, I'm just like, I'm, so, I'm so gonna die. This is like, I'm gonna die now. So I start playing it, and I realize it's such a fun game. Then, um, in my new house now, my dad literally came to the basement. And he's like, he sees me playing Donkey Kong, and he was like really happy because he was like, we're finally playing the game that we were scared of. And even though throughout the years he like tried to force me to play the game, like eventually I finally played and I got over my fear. And like he was just really, I guess, happy or proud that I finally got over something that I was scared of for a long time. And that's probably one of the most touching moments, other than um, the whole Mario Kart thing, that I can respect my dad for. Because, like, I'm cheering up now, I'm not fucking in it. Like, even though. I was scared of something or, some, or like whatever. He was he was there for me, and he he doesn't watch my YouTube videos or anything. Right? But Dad, for watching this, I, I thank you. That's that's all I want to say. I know I extended this episode for so long, but um, wow. Oh shit, I feel so emotional right now. I wow. Um, my dad doesn't watch my YouTube videos or anything. He doesn't really, like he knows that I have a channel, but like he doesn't see like um, he doesn't see like why I make videos and whatnot. But it doesn't really matter because damn, thanks, Dad. I guess I guess he's the reason why I play video games. I mean, throughout all these years, he's like the only person I've actually played video games with. Like that's an adult. Oh wow, I, I, if I look in the ca in the camera right now, I'm probably like, my eyes are just red and I have like tears all over my face. But like, I, I guess that's how much I respect my dad, like, he, he basically, in a way, helped me grow up to be what I am today, a gamer. And if he didn't buy me that N64, I, I don't know what I'd be at this stage in my life, honestly. I mean, I'd probably be a gamer, but like, I probably when I'm not taking the path of which I have taken right now. I, I know it's really odd and like not many people are gonna watch this but like I, I feel like this is a tribute video to my dad because he helped he basically helped me become what I am today.
And without that, I mean, I don't even know what I'd be today. Heck, I could probably be in school right now and I wouldn't even thought of doing YouTube. But like, I'm here right now making a video. Which, by the way, I am failing on. I am aware I'm failing terribly in this game. But, um, I'm trying my best to beat the level as well as talking. But, damn. It, it, it feels good, like, when you're proud to say, like, someone, like, especially a family member, has helped you in your life, and you can feel good talking about it, like, um, no disrespect to my mom or anything, like, I love my mom also, but, like, video gaming was always with my father, because, like, he was just there always, and, yes, there have been times where, like, we have gotten fights, and sometimes physical fights, too, but, in general, I mean, like, he was always there, and even to this day, like when he found out that I wasn't admitted to college because of uh, money issues and like the math issues and all that stuff, like he, like he said, he kept on, he, like at some point he didn't really believe me, but like he said, like now I'm learning. And I don't know, it's just like having like the gratifying, like the sense that like, yes, someone is actually there to tell me like when being right or wrong. I'm only 19 by the way, so like, I'm not that old in my life where like, um, I'm just trying to like, figure out everything on my own, like, I still have my dad, thank god. But like, anything can happen at any time. Oh shit, Sonic's already dead, fuck me. Oh hey bro, I'm just gonna jump a okay. I'm just gonna not die, I think, that'd be nice. I know this episode's been on for a while, I apologize again, but um, yeah, I, I don't think I have anything more to say about my dad now, even though I really, really love the man. And now that I think about it, I mean, he's always been there for me. Yeah. What? Seriously? Wow. It's kind of weird, because, like, I've already just, like, randomly talked about like a subject that like I've never really talked about before and now I don't really know what to follow up with like it's just like awkward silence of like wow he really like he just said something that's like deep from his heart and it's like what are you gonna talk about now just like not PG-18 things maybe I don't know it's just like if there's one thing I can do before the inevitable happens it would probably be playing Mario Kart with him like one last time. <sighs> I don't know why saying that makes me so teary and basically I feel like I'm crying almost, but like whatever. Real men do well, fuck it, real men cry. Here here's a tip for everyone. If you have to cry, cry. That's that's about it. Because no matter how old you're gonna be, something's gonna happen in your life where you're gonna cry. And I would say it's normal. Like there are groups and whatnot, like Boys to Men. If you guys have ever heard of that, like where um, teenagers go talk to like adults who face issues with, like they have issues every day of and, like whatnot. And people might say it's like a group of like weak guys or whatever, but really, I mean, I I've never visited to a, a Boys to Men group or anything. It's, excuse me, mostly because I mean I don't really need it, but. For those that like, they're really in like a time of need, they just want someone to talk to, I would honestly recommend that. There's even uh, Girls to Women, I believe, or some so, uh, something similar for like, girls who want to talk to like, other women. Just to like, get, self, so, get stuff off their chest. Okay, I have enough lives, I just want to make sure. This is going to be an insane episode that's going to eat up my hard drive, Jesus. But you know what, I think, th I think this episode is, was well worth it. For like, the subject that I've talked about and everything. It's, it's well worth it. Oh god. Um... Shoot, I might have messed up. Yeah, I, de I, messed, I messed up, definitely. Alright, I need Tails up here. Yeah, you throw- you go down there. Sonic, just get thrown up. Sonic? Sonic? There you go. Perfect. I'm just trying to like finish up this game right now so I can go and edit everything. Cause I mean I've been recording for like four and a half hours, including all my errors and whatnot. 
Oh, I think this is the last one. Oh, shoot. Nah, shit. I have, like, snot in my nose now. Like, it's all runny. Jesus, I have. Wow. Um. I think I beat the level. Nice. Wow. Such a great way to end the episode. Oh, wow. Um. I guess I'm gonna call this episode Ode to Father because he's not dead or anything. And I feel like I really should name it that, but something more appropriate. But, Dad, if you're watching this, thank you so much for bringing me where I am today. And to everyone else who's watching this, I'll see you guys in the next episode. So, thanks for watching. And if, if your father is hopefully still alive, give him a call. Or, like, if, if you're far away, give him a call. If not, just be thankful for if he if he helped you in your life or not. Because there are some people I know that may have not had a perfect father, but still. Just respect anyone who's helped you along your way, especially, like, an adult figure. And with that, I'm going to end the episode. So, thanks everyone for watching. And I will see you guys in the next episode. So again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Night with you live. Peace.